Uh, our next, and this is, uh, by the way, uh, the final question was prepared in advance by Somo, so what we'd like to do after this is go to the audience for questions, so we've set up a mic after this question. Uh, and if, so if you want to be thinking about something you'd like to ask, uh, we'll try to take at least two or three of those before the night is out, okay? This is the final one that we've prepared in advance. Uh, education funding has been slashed $1 billion statewide since the start of the recession and low-income communities already, already struggling to close the state's education gap have been hurt most by these dramatic cutbacks. In light of an unacceptable school dropout rate among youth in District 27, and a recent court decision ordering the legislature to spend hundreds of millions more on public schools, what will you do as a member of the legislature to improve the quality of education in your district and across the state? Thank you. As mentioned, uh, the state now owes our students $317 million. The question then becomes, what do we do with that money? Well, I think we have to give it back to the teachers so that, one, they get the professional development that they need. We increase their salaries. We use that money also to attract, uh, buy furniture. A lot of our students have old desks or even worse, old books where the curriculum is no longer effective. So we've got to utilize that money in a wise manner. The other thing we have to do, and this is perhaps the most important, is we've got to establish creative partnerships between school districts and outside entities. It's what I've done the last 20 months as a governing board member. When our students needed science classes, I had a meeting with the Audubon Society, and our students were then able to take advantage of those uh, summer school classes. When we needed after school programming, I met with Tim Valencia up on the 12th floor of City Council, and we were able to give our students after school programs. We became the only district in the entire metropolitan area to have four after school centers. The, the, the thing we have to do is, yes, invest in that money wisely, but money cannot be the only answer. That's too easy. We have to create an environment where education reigns. We have to ask ourselves, what can we do? And then we have to reach out to our parents and say, how can you be an effective parent to make sure that our students are getting the resources and the teachings that they need prior to entering kindergarten. So the question of education is really a question of all of us. What are we doing to make it better? Thank you. So this is a very important question, and this is one that I, that I study often. Um, I, I'm actually two chapters away from my doctorate degree in education policy, and I think that's important that we have individuals in this position uh, who fundamentally understand education and who fundamentally believe no matter what community kids grow up in, they all deserve a quality education. There was a report that came out a couple years ago called the Drop Report, and it showed that if we cut half of the 2010 uh, Latino dropout rates, we would have an additional $30 million annually from a state level. Out of that $31 million, $23 million of that, those funds would be generated back into our economy. So cutting the dropout rate is first, it's, it's fundamental. And, but the question is, how do you do that? You do that by a number of ways. And the first thing that you do is you invest in early childhood education. Right now in this state, we don't fund full day kindergarten. So in different communities, you have, in the, you have children who do not get access to full day kindergarten. We need to invest in pre-K Head Start because right now the way that it lands is in low income communities, you currently have students who start first grade, first grade, day one, already three years behind their white peers. That's not acceptable. And as a state representative, I'll continue to bring that education policy uh, passion that I have and fighting for our people day in and day out to make sure that all kids, no matter what community they live in, they have a perfect, they have an excellent opportunity to show in public education. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron. My answer to a lot of these questions is to elect more Democrats and to elect a Democratic governor. I think in the long term, that's how we make education the number one priority of the state. I hear this question all the time in my household. My wife's an elementary school principal. She's the elementary school principal at Cesar Chavez Elementary. And even when we restore that 300 million that the court ordered us to restore, there's still a billion dollars left that we've cut from our schools in the last uh, five years. And even if we were to get to the billion dollars uh, that we've, been, we've cut over the last five years since Republicans have had the keys to the legislature and the governor's office, our spending per student would still be far behind the national average, would still be at the bottom of the pack compared to the rest of the country. 
So all of this comes down to electing a Democratic governor and electing Democrats to the state senate uh, that will fight for education. With the $300 million that we have, we need to make sure teachers get a raise. Uh, they get a competitive salary so we can keep the best teachers. We need to make sure that we're looking at school finance restructuring to make sure that the school districts that need it the most uh, get that money and the teachers that perform the best and the administrators uh, get bonuses to make sure that the money is being most uh, utilized to make sure the kids that need it most can have the best opportunity to succeed and to go to college just like everybody else in every other part of the state. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Okay, immediately I called um, the Capitol to ask for a special session so we can pay this money back to our students and our teachers and our school districts because they deserve it. So I'm in the process of trying to just call the special session so we can get that work done. Um, uh, Mr. Bolding here, he hit it on the nose with that data. I mean, that came right out of Morrison Institute and, and it is true. If, if we can get more graduates graduating, then they can invest back into our economy. It's all called supply and demand. So that kind of data is what I talk about in my education committee. I'm on the education committee, and I, I value Morrison Institute because they do give us facts. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't go too far, but um, what I immediately also do is create legislation. I'm a visionary and a former educator. So I have a bill currently, and I'm gonna keep uh, presenting it, that has to do with Common Core. And what I wanna do is prepare our aspiring teachers, the teachers that are going into the teacher preparation program in our three universities, they need to, right off the bat, get trained in that preparation program so they can come back to District 27 already prepared, knowing Common Core, knowing the expectations, not needing much professional development because as a former teacher, I remember the most professional development I got was about three days because that's all really we're allowed to be out of that classroom. Otherwise, it's not good for the student. So we can't rely on just professional development. We have to train the aspiring teachers at the college level. First. Thank you. Repeat that question. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, the question is that uh, we've been uh, we've had a billion dollars cut in statewide funding for public education since the Great Recession, uh, in light of unacceptable school dropout rates among youth in District 27, and the recent court decision by the legislature to spend hundreds of millions more on public schools. What would you do as a member of the legislature to improve the quality of education in your district and statewide? Well. At, at Roosevelt School District, we have been doing a lot of great things. Uh, we've been put in a lot of after-school programs, mentoring programs, uh, mentoring for all children, not even not just the ones that need it. Children that want to excel. We want to provide all every every opportunity for any child to grow. But but the reality is that Arizona ignores children. Today's article, or yes, today there was an article in the newspaper about how Arizona ranks 47th for children. It's not a good place to have children because they don't prioritize education. Education is always last. They prefer to, to pay private prisons to fill beds than to fund education. So I would continuously fight to fund education and to make it fair funding straight across, across the board. Um, also, I think that um, early childhood is very important. There is no early childhood paid by the state in the state of Arizona. There is not one program that they sponsor. So this is going back to the fact that they don't prioritize education. So early childhood is very important for our children. And that's what I would do. I would fight and put uh, legislation together to help all children, especially very young because our children need to be prepared. They need to be ready to come to school and to learn. Thank you. I believe in order to improve the quality of the schools in District 27, we need to invest the resources. Arizona has a broken school finance system, and until we address that, we're gonna to continue to have the same problem. The court ordered us to pay $1.3 billion 
in an inflationary factor that the legislature withheld from schools for the past five years. It's important to know that in the year 2000, I was in the legislature and there were a coalition of Democrats and Republicans that put this inflationary factor issue to the vote of the people and the people passed it and that is why today we have an argument and a court that can order um, this payment. I raise that issue because I think that the time is ripe again to bring a coalition of Democrats and Republicans that are pro-education to come together to address the school finance system. We have a school finance system that relies on uh, taxpayers voting for overrides and bonds and taxing themselves. In our district, that is very difficult. People are taxed to the hill. They live paycheck to paycheck, some folks. What, what can we do for school financing? We can roll in tax exemptions. We lose literally billions of dollars a year in tax exemptions that do not come to the general fund. We need to stop diverting taxpayer dollars to private schools to benefit a handful of kids. And I think that we need to bring a coalition of legislators together to identify a dedicated revenue source that pays for public education. I think there's the will, and I think that the time is right to do that this upcoming session. Thank you.